everyone, my name is Kathy. Welcome to the watercolor art class. Uh, we will do a step-by-step -step, um, painting. I have sent out the drawing already, so hopefully you received that and you've been able to draw it. Um, the, the sketch was in pencil, so it's fairly light on mine because I don't want all those lines to show, but when we're completed, this is what we'll end up with or something pretty close to that. And not to worry if yours isn't exactly the same as your neighbors. And we all have different perspectives. We all see things differently. We all see colors a little bit differently. Um, I did send through a group listing of colors for you. Uh, red, um, burnt sienna or a brown color, ultramarine, green, black, and ochre. So those were the colors that we're going to use in this picture today. So you'll also wanna have on board or, or handy some paper towel. And I just take a square, this is a half a square. So a, a picture of this, a rectangle, um, and I just cut it in four so that I have lots of, of little pieces to use. Um, brushes, I have a number of brushes. Right now I have a three, I have a five, I have a, um, I'm not sure what else I have there. I have an eight. So if you, you know, just because we're going to do a few spots that are a little bit bigger, I'm just using a little bit bigger brush because it just holds a little bit more water, a little bit more paint. Um, what else do I need to tell you before we start? Oh, just a couple of glasses of water, just clear water. One for um, rinsing and one for a clear water if we need it, just to rinse your brushes off. And with that, um, I'll just remind you, this is just a piece of paper. This is just a, or a canvas, if that's what you're using. Um, not to worry too much about perfection. This is just about working with like-minded artists and trying something new. I will remind you throughout the, the art class, just to drop your shoulders, just to drop them down and take a deep breath. So we'll start with that. We'll just take three deep breaths and hold it at the top and then just release it fast or slow. It's up to you. But so let's take a, take a deep breath in and hold it and out and drop those shoulders. Another deep breath in and hold it and out. And one more deep breath in and out. And just drop those shoulders down and just give a little shake, just relax. This is, as I said, just, just for practice, not about perfection. So this is a step-by-step. -step. So I will take you through one step at a time doing the painting. Kathy, someone's asked if you could show how to tape paper on the back only. Yes, I have green tape. Green tape, I just fold it in a little circle. And just press it onto my backer board. And I did want to talk a little bit about backer boards. I was thinking about this the other day. So what I have for my backer board, this is a piece of cardboard. So it's a piece of cardboard covered over with paper. And then I've just used packing tape, the clear packing tape, so that if I get paint on my edges, I can just wipe it off with a washcloth. I can just wipe it clean. So you could buy an expensive backer board at an art store, or you could just make your own, just from a piece of cardboard. And just I just use white paper so that it seems white on the front, and I just used clear packing tape, which you can get from the dollar store, you can get from Walmart, you can get from other hardware stores. It's a big roll, fairly inexpensive. So I have several of those on the go at one time. So this also is on a backer board. So it's just, it's just cardboard and then plastic tape so that it wipes off clear. So hopefully that gives some of you some relief. You don't need a big expensive, um, you spend a lot of time in your art room. I spend a lot of time here. So, so I try to minimize my costs and Keep it simple. 
What is the purpose of, um, so it doesn't buckle? Why do I put the tape on it? Yes, yeah, yeah. so, so it doesn't buckle and so that I can wipe it clear. So if I was to get paint on my board, if I painted and I got paint on my board, then I can just use a piece of paper towel because it's plastic. And if I have to scrub a little bit with water because it's dry, I can do that. Sometimes I, I may put another piece of paper over if I can't get all of the, the, um, the color out just to make it white again, but it's just, just it makes it easy to clean. Okay, thank you. And my tape doesn't, so when I put my tape on, I can take my tape off easily and put it back on again. <laughs> yeah, so it just keeps it simple. Keep it simple. KISS, keep it super simple. So we're going to start with the biggest, brightest spot in the picture. We're going to start with the bridge because that seemed to me like the most fun. So this bridge is red. The roof is not red, but the bridge itself is. But the inside of the bridge where you see inside the door is not, is not, um, not red. So leave the inside of the bridge clear and leave the roof clear. But we're going to paint on the sides and around the front. Now I'm not going to wet my canvas first. I'm going to do wet paint on dry paper. I'm going to pull out my red. I'm just going to tap my brush into my paper towel. Just take the excess off the ridge of my brush, go into my red paint. And I'm just going to paint the bridge. So let's just take a deep breath and then we're going to just paint the bridge. So just follow the lines that you've drawn. So that's the front. I'm going underneath the roof line. So for anyone that's new, we just do this step by step. We work our way through the project. Again, no need for absolute perfection. If you go out of the lines, that's okay. I applaud you. There is no judgment here. We all have our own interpretations. Okay, and I'm just going to do the whole bridge. So take your time painting your bridge, or the, the building. I'm, I'm come, right, I was gonna say, I don't understand that that's a bridge. It looks like the side. It's the, it's the building, sorry. It's, it's called a okay. covered bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Remember that movie? <laughs> that was a good movie. Meryl Streep, I can't remember the name. That's when I learned about covered bridges. Okay, so that now I understand where you're painting. I didn't get it. Thank okay. you. So if you're just drawing this picture, um, find yourself a ruler or a, a straight surface because it does require a certain perspective. So that's the outside of the covered bridge. Now we'll go ahead and we'll do some more details on that a little. In a little while, we want to let some of that dry, but that is the base of the bridge and the side of the bridge. Okay. 
In our next color, we're going to do the road in front of the bridge opening. And that's in a brown or burnt sienna. And I'm going to use a fair bit of water because I don't want it to be really dark. I want it to be a little bit lighter, look more like a road. So the road is right over at the corner of the bridge. And the reason that I'm doing the road next is because I'm trying not to touch any parts where my bridge is still wet. So just stay away from the corner, uh, the corners of the opening of your bridge. Just avoid that. Just leave a little gap for now. And then we're just going to fill in, and I'm still doing wet paint on dry. And I'm, and I'm working the way the road would naturally flow away from the opening of the bridge, or, or if you wanna look at the other way, coming towards the opening of the bridge. So I'm doing my strokes. So if those strokes show lines, they're going to come towards or away from the opening of the bridge. You can see I'm not worried or thinking that it needs to be completely perfect. If I have some spots in there that are lighter or darker, it is a road. So it is fairly forgiving that way. If we think our road is too dark, <clears throat> How can we lighten it then? Water okay. and tap off? Wet your brush. Yeah. So if I, if I demonstrate, I'll just wet my brush and mm -hmm. I can take my brush and wipe it on the paint, mm -hmm. tap off on the paper towel and wet again and tap off on paper towel. And keep doing that until it's called, it's... it's called lifting off and you'll find that it will take, the paint has, if the paint is still damp, it has no way to prevent you from lifting the paint off. It has to move. So okay. just work, just work it. And if it doesn't automatically, just give your brush a little bit of a wiggle, uh -huh. wet your brush again and do it again on the same spot and do that a few times and you'll see it will lift off. Okay because you, you worked with that, that paper. But just be careful with your paper that you don't damage it, but just, just wet it and, and lift it off. So we just try and stay in the same direction going from, from the road into the bridge or from the bridge out. So try and okay. keep that, that direction. Right. So also remember that watercolor dries 20 to 30 percent lighter from the time we put it on. So it may lighten a bit. So not to think that it's overly dark. And we're also going to put some details at the side of the road and a couple of rocks on there. So we'll have an, another little bit of a dimension. Now in keeping the same idea, staying away from the bridge, and try not to disturb too much of our road. But if we do hit a little bit of a road with our green, not to worry about that because grass sometimes grows into, um, into gravel as well. So now I'm going to put green. So I'm, I'm painting grass in this whole section. So I have a, a light green, it's like a leaf green or a sap green. If you have a darker green, it's we're going to add a little bit of ochre to this, but we're and I'm still I'm doing wet paint on dry. And I'm not too concerned about it looking completely even. If I have light spots and dark spots, it is a green patch of grass. They often have little dead spots or little yellow or weeds in there. So you can see it's not completely even. 
And my thoughts are only just to get the paint on to have the green surface where I can see now that I've got a patch of grass, a road, and the opening to a bridge. We're going to have a shore along where the water is. So we, you can darken some where you might have grass, you can darken it and make your shore. We're going to have grass coming up um, into the water anyway. So that it should be okay. Just take a deep breath and go with it. Okay, so now we have some green grass on the other side. While I have that green out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the tops of the trees. So I've got some trees that may or may not have come through, but we're just doing the tops. So if yours didn't come through, you can just do the tops of the trees. So we're not filling in at this point because we still want to leave that the bridge alone. But we're just doing the tops of some trees. So just take a deep breath. All we're doing is tracing a few lines just for the tops of the trees. Once we put the water in, which is coming next, it will start to look a little more clear. So I'm using ultramarine blue. And again, I'm doing wet on dry. So I'm just getting my brush wet with ultramarine blue or a darker blue. And I'm just going to do a little bit of water above the grass on the one side. And then I'm going to do lots of water on the other side. So halfway under the bridge, we're leaving a line because this is where the little bricks are that are going to hold up the other end of the bridge. So it's only halfway. And I'm going to fill this in all the way to the corner, wet on dry with ultramarine blue right to the bridge. And I know on this picture, there is a darker spot and we will do that darker spot in the middle. But firstly, let's get the water on. So it's right to the shore where the green grass is. And again, it's water and water doesn't always move unless it's early, early in the morning and there's no current. Water has motion in it. So not to worry if your blue isn't completely even. If you have little white spots, so when we put this blue on, once this blue is dry, when I put fresh blue on top, I'll be able to make that line. It's the same blue. So fill in that whole area. Okay. The whole area. Yes, the whole area. Remember, it's going to dry lighter. So while you're doing your water, I will read you our halftime card. Believe it or not, it's halftime already. So may you know joy meditations for everyday living. The word of the day is 
healing. May you know healing. May you know the power of this process. May you embrace it and let it do its job. We are constantly being reborn. New cells are being formed constantly. You will literally not be the same person from one moment to the next. We are also always healing, whether it's emotionally or physically. Stress can mask that, but ask yourself what you need to heal from. What can aid in that healing and what small steps can you take every day toward healing yourself to heal into wholeness? May you know healing. Well, in some forms, we all need a little bit of healing. That's always a nice reading for today. So let's go ahead and we'll get into some black. We're going to use black. I'm using wet on dry. I'm using black paint, but I'm watering it down a lot, more than you think. So you want a very, very light, light gray. The roof on the covered bridge is tin. And it also is going to have a reflection. The sun is going to be shining on it in this area. So I'm just putting a little circle there just, just to show you, just in that area, that's going to be lighter than the rest. So you don't need to draw that circle. I just draw, I just put that on there to, to just to demonstrate that area. But so now I'm going to put that light gray on. And in that area, I'm going to take paint off. So paint the whole thing. But when you come to that circle spot at the front of the bridge, we're going to lift off while it's still wet. Good time to take it off while it's still wet. We're just going to lighten that area. So it looks like that's where the light is hitting the top of our construction. So I put it on, I'm using clear water, a damp brush, and just lifting off at the front of that bridge. It doesn't have to be, even if it's got a little bit of a line, that's okay. We just want to have one section lighter than the other. It's a little bit tricky, this lifting off, but it does work. This takes practice. So while we've got that same gray, we're going to do some shadows underneath the ridge that we just painted right on top of the red. We want a shadow. It's wider at the front. It goes narrower down to the back. <coughs> It's just still using the same gray to create a shadow. And we can do the same at the top of the bridge at the front. We're making the front of that gray right on top of the red. And then a really narrow band on the other side. And when you, when you put that gray on the red, if you picked up red on your brush, just rinse your brush off and start again with fresh gray. And just water it down. And we're going to work inside the bridge. So inside the bridge, there are a couple of lines. And it looks like a backwards K. And we also want to show the darkness of the opening of the bridge with a darker, darker color. 
So I'm still using black, a little bit watered down. This symbolizes the struts and the trusses holding up the bridge. I'm also going to deepen the shadow. Inside at the top of the bridge. So I'm putting a shadow inside at the top of the bridge. So if you were looking at it from a distance, you would know that there wasn't any light coming in at the top of that bridge. You can also see a little bit into the bridge. And we know there's some weathering happens. So we don't want a whole lot of details inside the bridge, but we do want to show a little bit of weathering inside the bridge with some of the boards. So I'm just doing some straight up and down, just a little bit of lines, just going the same direction as the bridge. And they're not all connected, they're just just gives that, when you hold it back and you look, it just gives that bridge a little bit of depth. We'll continue with the black and I'm going to come down the side of the bridge. So I'm going to outline the front of the bridge. With black. And while I still have that black, I'm going to do underneath the bridge where the water is. And I'm going to create a shadow in the water. I'm going to carry that line along the river bank at the top, right to the outside edge. And I'll do the same on the top of the water on the other side so that I create a shoreline on both sides. And now that bridge, right now that bridge looks like it's sitting right up there in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to join the corner of that bridge with ochre. So again, wet paint on dry. So I've got ochre. I'm joining the corner of the bridge to my shore. And then I'm going to fill this in. And this ochre piece is the rocks, the building blocks that hold the bridge at the other end. So once you have that ochre piece, it will start to look a little bit more realistic. Now we are going to go ahead from here. I'm going to take my brown, which is my, my um, burnt sienna, and I'm going to put some, the looks, just, just some dots in here to make this look like bricks. 
So once you do that with your colors, you'll see you'll see that that looks more like bricks. And, and I'm also going to extend from the only from the end of the bridge. I'm putting burnt sienna just at the end of the bridge. It's a funny little spot. It doesn't look like much of anything, but once we put grass and trees around that, you'll see that that's actually a road. It comes out the end of the bridge. A little bit our river or, or lake, I guess it's a river, is dry. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put that, that current in our river. This is fresh paint. So we're drawing something similar to this. We're just setting it on top of the paint we currently have there. So I'm not, I'm trying to set the paint on top, not blend it with it. I want it to sit as a darker color. It's exactly the same ultramarine blue, but because the other dried, This will give us a current. So, and I can take a few extra little strokes in the in the river just to give a little bit extra movement. If it looks too contrived, I just rub on it. I don't want it to look too unnatural, so I can use a little bit of water, just blend it in. I'm going to put some brown at the shore or at the, at the side of the bridge at the bottom. I'm just going to use some of the burnt sienna. Just create a little bit of roughage at the side. I'll do the same at where the grass and the water meet. Just give a little bit of roughage up there. I just added that burnt sienna on the shore and at the side where the bridge is. And I just a couple little wiggles of line just to make it look like there's some loose gravel. Where is the loose gravel, Kathy? I just I just put a couple of little lines here at the side just to make it look like that gravel is just a little bit loose. And then I'm going to get into my trees and my greenery. So I'm filling, but I'm going in an upward motion. I'm filling in. This is again wet on dry. I'm avoiding, I'm just, I'm not trying to cover over that little patch of brown because I want that road to show. I'm coming right to the shoreline and then my strokes are going up. So I'm going right to the shoreline and then up, pulling up with my brush, just pulling. I'm not trying to fill in every inch because I do want a different color green. We'll use a darker green as well and we'll put some black in or brown for some of the branches, but I am going to go across the roof of my, my bridge. Just over the top. I'm just going in upward strokes so that I get the look of those trees growing up. And filling in wherever I put that green. And I'm going right to the side, right to the other corner, 
right across the river's edge, right to the side of the bridge. I'm coming back to that little patch where the road comes out at the tail end of the bridge and just adding some fresh brown on there so that it looks like that is a road. And then with the second green, as I said, we wanted to add a little bit of depth and darkness to some of the trees. So with a darker green, I'm just coming on from the shore's edge up in a few places, I'm just adding in a darker green. So I'm not overdoing it, but I'm adding in that dark so that it just adds a little bit of dimension to our forest in and around behind across the river. And again, still wet on dry and still working in an upward motion. Now I want that dark to sit quite, quite heavy at the outside edge. At the river's edge, I just like a few rocks. So I'm just putting those in in black and they're not round, they're, they're ovalish. They're, they're uh, all different shapes. And I'm going to put a touch of ochre on top, just so that it looks like the sun is hitting the tops of those rocks. And Kathy, are you using black to outline the rocks? I did black for the outline, yes. And then I just put ochre in the center. And in a couple of spots that you see is a little bit lighter, some of the green is showing through, that's okay. While I've got that ochre on my brush, I'm going to just brush a little bit of that ochre into my grass. I'm just using what's on my brush. I'm just gonna wet my brush again and throw a little ochre in on the other side of the grass. So it gives it a more natural flow. Now that my green in my trees is pretty well dry or close, I'm going to put some stems with black, just really lightly and really fine. I'm going to put some stems in my trees and not to overdo just here and there. Some may come beyond. I'm just giving a little bit of detail in the background. What color did you use for that, Kathy? The darker green? That's black. Black? Okay. Yep, that's black. And if it ends up it's lighter by the time you get to the outside that it's more of a gray, that's okay. It doesn't have to be completely stark black. And one last step for the point, with the point of my brush, I'm going to make some grasses coming from the side of the shore. So I'm just touching the shore with my brush and flicking up all the way to the outside edge so that the grass is coming into, or looks like it's coming right at the water's edge. That's the dark green. I'm going to add to that an ochre. So pulling up in between there, a little bit of ochre to lighten it up. And I can use the light green if I choose to in between that. 
I'm going to put a little bit of grass growing at the side of my, at the edge of my bridge. This is just the green. And I'm going to put a few tufts of grass growing all by themselves. Maybe it's a weed growing. You can decide where you put your artist signature. It's up to you. I like to blend mine right in with the picture. And I've just added a little touch of the burnt sienna just to come down to the water's edge at the end of that, the, the brick. And there you go. That's what you could do in one hour. <laughs> so you could do a whole lot more. We could do uh, what we haven't done is a little bit of weathering on the side of the bridge. So, so I might do a little bit of weathering coming down. Are you doing the weathering in gray or black? That's that's in black. It's more of a gray, a bit of it's a not quite dark. It's not stark black, but it's um yeah. Okay, thank you. Just enough to show up. How could you put um, different colors to make it look like fall? To make it look like fall? Yeah. You could add oranges and reds to the background. Uh, let me just get a different brush. Let's see, let's see what I could do here. So if I'm adding on a little bit of orangey or a little bit of red, maybe a little bit at the shoreline, give a nice, you could add some ochre. And once your green is dry, you can go ahead and you can put those colors over top, right on top of your green. So you want to leave some, even though it's fall, if that's what your intent is, even though it's fall, you want to leave some green in there. But you also want to change, if you're doing a fall picture, you also want to change the look of your grass. It wouldn't be quite as green. So you would tone that down. You may even put a little bit of extra brown in your grasses for a fall picture. Does that make sense? So when I think in a fall picture, you would also have more um, you wouldn't have near as much foliage, so you would have more, more sticks coming up that are bare. 
you would have more bare leaves. And if you were doing that because it's fall, you would want to have some of that showing in your water, a little bit of your color. So we've just changed it from, <laughs> from a summer bridge <laughs> to a fall bridge. <laughs> now, if you wanted to, you could put some couple people in walking on the bridge. Uh, you could put people walking on the bridge, yes, yes. So <laughs> I, I like to do little silhouettes of people and I, if I'm going to do people. Um, so I, we would need to put them in perspective. So I would just do carrot people. So there's people <laughs> going into the bridge or coming out of the bridge or near the bridge. Walking hand in hand. Well, they are quite happy, aren't they? <laughs> right? They're not worried about COVID. <laughs> or they're in the same bubble. 